So we have a rather bizarre situation here. This is the main bathroom. This is the tub. And they've got this wall thing that comes down lower than me. I have to actually duck underneath of it to get into the, into the tub. I've never seen anything quite like it. It's, I can't comprehend what it was for. Unless they were trying to make some kind of a steam room or something, I don't know. But anyway, this needs to be removed. So here's the wall that needs to come out. See in here it goes all the way up inside. So I'm going to have to take this wall out up to this point and just make it straight across. Really bizarre. So here's what I did here. These were the existing studs that came way down. I needed to cut them off. I did all the measuring and then I cut through the sheetrock here with the sawzall to cut them off up higher so that I can take a 2x4 on its side, push it up in there, and it'll come down even with this. Then I can just put the sheetrock on there and have this corner with a corner bead on it. That way I didn't even have to touch any of this sheetrock and this uh, cut right here will be easy to, sp to spackle over. Now I've got this framed in. There's a stud here, stud here. I've got this solid stringer on the bottom, screwed up into there. And 
it's right here, the stringer is just the right uh, level to be able to put a piece of half inch sheetrock in there, put a corner bead on the outside and spackle it up. That was actually easier than I expected. <laughs> So this is much better. Now you can get into the tub without ducking under that thing or bumping your head on it. This is much more proper. So now I've got this tub area all finished with the sheetrock and I've done this first coat of spackle. I still need to do the corner up here. So I've got these three cuts up here where I cut through to, to cut off the stud uh, when I was doing the framing. So the first thing I need to do is cover those three slots with paper. So the insulation down here in the crawl space is a total mess. It's all falling down. And in fact, a lot of it is double faced, which is a real problem. That means it's got the vapor barrier on both sides. It was actually manufactured like that. I can remember when I was a kid in the 70s installing insulation that was double faced and I much preferred it because it wasn't as itchy because you didn't have the bare fiberglass. But the problem is there's a vapor barrier on both sides and the, uh, the moisture gets stuck in there, can't get out, and it's a real problem with the, having all that moisture trapped in there. So we're going to have to completely redo all of the insulation. And uh, we discovered a long time ago that if you get an insulation company in here to do it for you, it's actually cheaper getting the insulation installed than it is just going down to Lowe's and buying it ourselves so that's a really good deal it's all installed and it's done properly and it's cheaper than we could do it ourselves but they're also going to charge us to take it out so that's something we could do so i'm actually not doing it uh, barry and bruce are are taking it out as soon as it's out then we will be able to get the insulation company in here to uh to reinstall good new insulation Barry and Bruce are down here tearing it out and rolling it up and bagging it with the appropriate protective suits. This is the kitchen where the cabinets will be and it has to be completely rewired. So Barry has been working on that. The uh, codes for the kitchens are considerably more stringent, stringent than they were in the 70s. You got to have at least two different uh, circuits for any receptacles. The lights have to be on a third circuit. So he's doing all that. We got one circuit here 
We'll have another circuit right over here in the island where there will be several pop-up uh, receptacles. Third circuit for the lights. Of course, we've got to do all that, then get it inspected, then get it sheetrocked and spackled before the cabinets can come in. So we're kind of making this a priority. And speaking of electrical stuff, this is the panel. And we have major issues with the panel. First of all, we have to, well, this, this whole thing is a total mess. There's the main panel, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. And then there's one here that goes down into the fourth garage down there where there's another one. The whole thing is a disaster. We didn't really realize this when we bought the house. We didn't look at it closely enough. But we're going to have to take all of this out, put in a whole brand new panel. Uh, another issue is that we have to run more circuits for the kitchen and a couple of other places. And there aren't any spaces left in that. That's a short panel. Though it's a 200 amp, we got to get one that's at least twice the length of that so we have enough room. So this is going to be a major thing. We're going to have to have the company, the power company come in shut off the power, take out all these wires and these boxes and put in a new panel. We're probably also going to have to completely redo the service entrance outside where the meter is and all that sort of thing. Another issue that we didn't quite think through is that here's the panel. This is in the third garage and then there's a dub double car garage here before it goes into the house. And for all of these new circuits that we got to run we got to run wire from there all the way into there. That's like 30 feet of wire or 40 feet of wire just to get into the kitchen. And we got to run at least a half a dozen circuits like that. Wire is very expensive. It's 200, I mean, it's $160 for a 250 foot roll. So, and then the expense of replacing all of this that we weren't planning on. Some things that we expected to have to do we didn't, so we saved money, but this is one that caught us by surprise. We're going to have to do this, and we weren't planning on the expense of it. But, you know, it's got to be done, so we're going to do it. So Elizabeth and I have been in Maine for the past week visiting her sister, and of course the work continued while we were gone, so let's see what Barry did while, while I was gone. This is the kitchen. You got all the wiring done. The electrical inspector was here. He passed all of this, so Barry was then able to sheetrock it. So the next thing I need to do is finish the sheetrock. Now we, uh, this is kind of a priority because we have the cabinets are being custom made by an Amish guy, which is cool, and they're going to be. He's going to actually install them, and that's going to happen in just a couple of weeks. So we need to make sure that the kitchen is ready to go. Also. We need to order the countertops and they come in with a laser and measure everything and make sure they get it exact and they can't do that of course until the sheetrock is, is finished. So this has been kind of a priority but it looks like we're on schedule to be able to get all that done and, and ready for the kitchen cabinets in time. And when the inspector was here he told us exactly what we expected that this whole electrical area here, the, the panel, the service entrance, it's all a disaster. It's unbelievably bad and there's no way that this would pass inspection. So we're going to have to completely replace the, the panel with all the circuit breakers, completely replace the service entrance, the mass, the meter, the whole bit. So instead of doing that there, it makes more sense to do it in here, much closer to the house. There's the door into the kitchen. So we're putting the new service panel right there. And uh, it'll give us much less, you can see Barry's already started running some of the wires. It'll be much less wiring than running all of those circuits all the way out there. So that's in progress as well. Also, while we were in Maine, the insulation company came in and did all the insulation down here in the crawl space. And that's a wonderful thing. They did it all correctly. As you can see, it's all nice. It's not sagging. The paper is up against the, the heated living space and the insulation is down, which is the proper way to do it. 
and the whole thing looks very nice and cleaned out considerably better than it was before Barry said that the team came in here and did the entire thing 2,000 square feet in three hours and the best part is we didn't have to mess with it So now I've got the first coat of spackle on the kitchen. So now we, we can get the, uh, the guys in here to do the measurements for the countertop. That'll be a good thing. And then yesterday, after I left, Barry continued to work. He got the lights in up here because he had removed the light and I was working in dark. <laughs> so he got those lights in. He also got that. And this is above the island uh, in the kitchen. And he got those lights working as well. So, things are moving along. I'm gonna have to sheetrock, put corner bead and all that up there. Well, I think that'll about do it for this video. Don't forget to tune in next time for another exciting episode of, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Live simple, live free, you be blessed. <laughs>